Hello and thank you for tuning in to my channel. My name is Christina. I am the owner of Tina B Fashions on Facebook as well as the owner of Exclusive TB on Etsy, A and B Crafty Creations on Etsy, and I am also a stay-at-home mother of one. So as I finish up this Thanksgiving romper that I am currently putting buttonholes on, I just wanted to give you a quick introduction about myself. I enjoy crafting, of course, sewing, embroidery, upholstery, workouts, and gardening. And I hope that I will be able to inspire you and bring a little bit of all that to my channel. I know some things you may find more interesting than others and I will try to keep the videos as divided as possible so you will know which one you're tuning in. Also I am hoping to do small tutorials, quick sew alongs, and help you out with getting started on anything you're passionate about that I know how to do. putting the other buttonhole on. Um, in this video, I would like if you would comment below about any of the things that I am doing in, these video, in this video, the sew along, that you may want more details on. As far as if you never used a buttonhole foot, or if you never sewed on a button using the machine, or using the ruffle foot, we go over all that in here. Well, we can go over all that. I'll show you briefly um, through these clips, just me utilizing it, but for any reason you would like more detail, just let me know. That will help me start on creating better videos, well, content, period, for you guys. Now I'm getting ready to clip the buttonholes. I start off using a seam ripper. Sometimes I just take my tiny scissors and I just cut right in the middle. Um, being careful not to slide all the way through the stitches. You never want to cut into any of your stitches. This bodice also has the fusible interfacing. Um, I like it best because I don't like interfacing to move around when you're utilizing it. Anyway, so basically I will be trying to upload a few times a month. I'm not going to dedicate certain times. And if I get more comfortable, I would hope to do some live videos, especially the ones that are doing tutorials, so you guys can ask questions and get answers right away from me. Um, I will be attaching now the foot that holds the buttons. So this is a sew on the buttons and you can use this to sew on uh, two hole buttons, four hole buttons. Uh, you just have to adjust your foot and please be sure to make sure your needle is actually clearing the holes on the buttons. You don't want to jam it. You don't want a needle to pop you in the face. I've had it happen before. Um, I remember when I first got my industrial machines, not these, these are residential. But my industrial machines, I had a lot of needle popping um, and flying at me till I got the niche of actually operating them. So I know some machines can be intimidating. Let's see. So, leave them in the other strap. And I'll hold it up in a minute just so you guys can see. So this one, my Etsy exclusive TV. I do a lot of uh, embroidery patches on there. I do a lot of children's clothes, mostly rumpers, t-shirts, birthday shirts. Um, I don't necessarily take too many custom orders on Etsy. I try to keep all my custom orders coming through Tina B Fashions on Facebook just because I can better communicate with my clients about what they need or want. Um, and it keeps, them, it keeps them separate. But I do enjoy Etsy more only because I can get an order, ship it, 
and then package it and it's ready to go. It's a lot less back and forth. So this is a turkey one that I hope to be adding and um, hope to be adding it soon, probably within this week for the time this video goes up. It should be up. Um, just a Thanksgiving one. Now moving on to this camo print pink that I have been holding on to this fabric for a while that I've been dying to use. And then I cut out the romper and I've been dying to sew it together for an Etsy demo. Um, I actually got this fabric at the Quilting Expo and like when I fell in love with it and just went, sat on it for a little bit. But now I finally get to sew it. Uh, my time has let up. So right here I'm just doing pressing. I'm going ahead and attaching my inner facing. It's feasible. Explaining that one side is itchy like sandpaper that goes down to the wrong side of fabric. So I'm pressing adding that. Those are my straps. So my straps and my bodice get the inner facing. And then let's see. So I'm pressing the straps in half, getting those ready to sew. Notice I have orange thread in a minute. I'll get ready to go ahead and change the thread out to the hot pink to match my fabric. Now I do it in interesting ways when it comes to a serger. I put my threads at the top of the serger, tie a knot, kind of like I do my embroidery machine. I go ahead and I do that the same way and then instead of pulling them through the serger, I just normally get a strap fabric or sometimes a piece of paper. And I go ahead and just start stitching till the thread runs out and change this color. Um, you want to make sure those knots at the top are very thin because you do not um, want the thicker knots to get stuck in the machine because then your thread will pop and then you'll just have to thread it the normal way anyways. Um, not all the machines are the same. Some you can pull straight through without problems. It just depends. And you notice that this particular serger actually holds four cones. Um, I've been doing three cones. So the stitching is just one less needle. So I have one top needle um, threaded and then the two from the bottom. So your two bottom loopers I will have threaded. Here I was winding the bobbin and pink is going well. I go ahead and switch my foot back to the standard foot that I'll be using to begin sewing the ruffles together and the straps. So I do not want to ramble the whole video. I'm going to go ahead and let you watch it through. Excuse my phone. I was messaging a client at the time. That was messing with me back and forth. This is kind of usually how my work day goes. My toddler is running around. No, well, actually, right now she was she actually took a nap. So I'm, I was grateful for that. Um, it was probably thanks to the rain and thunder, but for whatever reason, she actually napped. So I got a lot done um, while she was asleep. I'm going to go ahead and let you watch this clip. I'll slow it down slightly so you can get a better vision of what's going on. And I hope you enjoy. If you do enjoy this video, go ahead at the end. Give me a huge thumbs up. Like, subscribe, and share the video. And hopefully the channel. Let you get back to it.
going to do the same. As you can see so far, doing these ruffles is a process. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the ruffle foot. This part is pretty loud. But. So all I'm doing to use a ruffle foot, all I'm doing to use a ruffle foot is I'm going to take this foot off at the harness. Not the actual piece because this whole piece needs to be removed. Just gonna unscrew that, lift up. This has to go on the bar. Oops, this has to go on the bar that goes up and down. That's how it moves. So we're gonna slide that on. And the way we're gonna slide that on you may have to lift it up some and just kind of screw in there. I mean, I'm going to screw the screw back, just tighten it. It does help if you have it lowered sometimes to help line it up. Now, ruffle foot can look intimidating, but after you use it several times, it's really not that bad. I lift my foot. Uh, okay. If you're wondering mine, I leave at my stitch length at a 2.5. What I do do is move my needle over slightly. Okay. 
I just want to make sure it's not going to hit the ruffle plate at it, ruffle foot at any time. So now I'm going to go ahead. This tail is really good to leave on there. I'm going to leave the tail on. If I was creating a ruffle and attaching the fabric at the same time, the fabric would go underneath and then the part that you're ruffling is going at the top. But the way I do mine, because I don't want my ruffles to fall apart or come loose, and sometimes I don't use them all at the same time, I just make a bunch of ruffles and then I have them ready to go. So I do them separately from what they get attached to. So we're gonna go ahead and attach this ruffle foot. Again, my stitch length is at a 2.5, but on here I'm on the second notch. You would adjust this to match the um, how many ruffles you want. So that's at a six. I want to play around with it to see if you get what you want. And on here, you don't want to pull your fabric from the back side you don't want to pull it from the front you just want the foot to do its job your job is just to guide it and make sure that fabric stays aligned where it needs to be and as you can see there it goes my ruffles. So I'm gonna keep going with this. So now I have all my ruffle done. They look great. They're evenly spaced. We're going to set this aside for now. This really isn't a tutorial on how to make the rumper or how to use a ruffle foot or how to use a, a button foot or buttonhole. Um, this is really just you watching me. So, but any case, I'm going to move on to the strap so we no longer need the ruffle foot. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. 
exactly the same way that I put it on being careful not to bump my needle so we're gonna put this lovely guy away I'm gonna touch this foot I mean, most machines I believe close the A foot if I'm not mistaking All right, now we clear my settings. Go ahead and sew the straps. Now, sewing the straps is very basic. What I'm gonna do is pull my thread behind, put that on there, and stitch. Pivot the corners. My machine stops with the needle down. Most modern machines do. With an older machine, you may have to adjust the needle. not too worried about my edges not being straight because that's all going to be encased in the inside what i am worried about is clipping these ends to reduce bulk and the same thing with this side going to clip those now we're going to turn these uh inside out I'm using my tube turner. There we go, and then I use the same thing to go ahead and poke out those ends. Go ahead and do this one. There you go. Now I'm just going to scoot over and press these and I will be right back. And it's starting to thunder and rain. So now that I have those all pressed, what I'm going to do is do my top stitch. When I top stitch, I go ahead and in this case, I move my needle all the way to the right. And I increase my stitch length. Um, I'm doing like decorative top stitching to that show. I like to keep it at like a three, either a three for sure, but I always do 3.5. Go ahead and stitch that. Pivot. Repeat the same for the other one. Somehow I have a piece of
my straps now what I'm going to do is come over to the serger and I'm going to serge these edges unfortunately my camera died in the middle of me filming this but if you enjoy this content and want to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.